I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And if you're new here, my channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working professional photographer. A little bit of background about me, I've shot over 100 assignments for the New York Times all around the world. I'm a wildlife photojournalist, a Leica user. I hosted a reality TV show about photography called Photo Face Up on History Channel Asia that you've probably never heard of. And I own and operate my own commercial photography and video production business called Mott Visuals based here in Vietnam and working globally. Today I'm going to talk about five cliche images that a lot of you are taking. When you clicked on this, you thought, not me. I'm going to laugh at those other people and just make fun of them a bit. But no, you're doing it. I've seen it in my workshops. I've seen it in my one-on-one -on -one sessions. I've seen it my portfolio reviews, my website reviews, a lot of you are taking it. I'm going to tell you what those images are and why you need to stop right now. Okay, first things first, as usual, well not as usual, I've added some new items to my online store. I've added like a whole educational section. In addition to my one-on-one, -on -one, one hour sessions for $99, I offer a three session bundle package with three one hour sessions for $250, so you're saving 50 bucks right there. And the one I'm really excited about is my assignment package. This is like a mini personalized one-on-one -on -one workshop. It is $300 for three one hour sessions based over the course of three weeks and, and how it works is I give you a personalized assignment based on your level of photography and based on your interest in photography. So check that out. It's all available on my site. Also have a new black and white preset on there and a new bundle package for my presets. And as always, I still sell my prints for $99 with free shipping globally. So now let's get into what makes you a cliche photographer. Well, I'm not going to be that harsh and call you a cliche photographer. You take these. I'm just going to say these are cliche images. I have taken them before. Shh. Don't tell anyone, haven't decided as I'm filming this if I'm actually going to show you the cliche images that I've taken because it will probably could ruin my reputation here. I have done some of these things before, not all of them, but I have done some of these things. I'm guilty of some of these things. I'm going to go through these five images one by one and you know, if you do these things, don't tell anyone you did them. Just slowly after you watch this, just go over to your Instagram account, go over to your website and just remove them. Don't make a big fuss about it. You don't want anyone to know. You don't want me to know. Slowly remove them. Don't make a lot of noise about it. So the first cliche image I'm going to talk about is the 70 to 200 portrait headshot. It's basically like a glorified headshot. And I know you're going to say, no, 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 I'm different. Mine's my 70 to 200 shot, my long lens compressed portrait shot of someone's face. It's different. It's different. Why? Oh, because I was in uh, Brazil or I went to Asia. I went to some exotic location. It's not different. It's still just a headshot. It's just of someone that doesn't look like you. That doesn't make it a great picture. That doesn't make it interesting. That doesn't make it an intriguing photograph. If you're gonna shoot tight on someone's face, do it with purpose. Don't just take it because they're a different nationality or different ethnicity than you are. Take that tight shot because you have purpose to it. And that's gonna be a theme throughout today. If you're gonna shoot tight on someone's face, do it because they have really, really intriguing eyes. Or do it because they have a weathered or textured face or something close about their face is telling a story. Something close about their face is telling you something about this person. Now, I'm not saying you always have to pull back and do a wide portrait, which I like to do, just but some people take really close headshots really well, but it's very, very difficult. In addition to the person having an intriguing face or interesting eyes, you've also gotta make sure that you've captured a good mood, a good expression. Something about them has to come through the tighter you get, the more interesting all those things need to be. So if you're going to shoot tight, if you're going to shoot with a long lens, I'm not a big fan of the 7200, as many of you know, but whatever, you're going to shoot with a long lens in general, do it with purpose. Ask yourself why. Why am I getting close? What am I trying to say about the person's face and their expressions? If you have reasoning for all those things, fine. Then get close. But without that, just a tight shot of someone's head, you're, you're just doing headshots. You're just basically doing like LinkedIn headshots for someone that lives in an exotic location or exotic location by your standards. So stop doing that shot. And if you have it in your portfolio, get it out of there. And the second image on my list of cliche images, another one that I see all the time, not just in amateur photographers, a ton of pro photographers take this shot as well. And it just kills me. This one kind of pairs with the first one a lot. It's like everyone that has that shot, the headshot, their next shot is this shot. And that's the shot of like a bunch of kids in an exotic location looking directly into your camera. 
sorry, but you all have it and it's not a good picture. It's a great picture to have if you're a tourist going on vacation, right? I mean, it's great to show people where you were, what the people were like, what the culture was like, fine. But if you're a photographer, no, it's not good enough. No, it shouldn't be in your portfolio. No, it's not a nice picture. It's just a tourist picture. That's it. That's what tourists do. They go and visit a place and they'll see a bunch of kids in a place and they say, come on over and take a photograph of all the kids looking and smiling into your camera. If you're a photographer and you want to get good travel shots, then you spend time, you document, you capture natural moments. If you're a tourist, fine, no problem. If you're a photographer and you just took the picture from memory, fine, but that should not end up in your portfolio. Number three is, oh, you're walking somewhere, you saw something interesting and you stopped and took a picture shot. It's kind of a long name for that one. I need to workshop that a little bit. Okay, let me explain what I mean by that. This is kind of like a cousin of the last two that I talked about. This is like you were in, uh, let's say you were on vacation, you were in Paris and you were walking around and you saw the Eiffel Tower for the first time and you see it and you stop and you take a photograph of it, right? Again, that's what a tourist does. A tourist sees something interesting, sees something on their list, they stop and they photograph it. Now, I'm not saying you can't photograph the Eiffel Tower, but if you're a photographer, you need to put more thought into it than that. Again, just because it's the Eiffel Tower doesn't mean it's a good picture. It doesn't mean it should end up in your portfolio. If you really want to capture an interesting image of the Eiffel Tower, do things that a photographer would do, which is stop. Okay, you see it, it's interesting. Look around, try a different perspective. Whether you're crawling down the ground or you climb up from somewhere, try something different than just, oh, I'm there, stop, shoot it. Think about your composition. Is there something you could frame it through that would tell the story, right? If you're shooting through a window and there's a reflection, uh, if you shoot through a puddle or something like that, is there other ways to show the Eiffel Tower in a more interesting and more dynamic way? If you were there in the middle of the afternoon and the light was really harsh and you wanted to capture it at a better time, go back. That's what a photographer would do. They would stop, yes, they would see it, and then before they took a picture, or any of that. A lot of processing's going on in their head. Again, if you're on vacation and you're just taking pictures and you don't really care where those end up or they don't, or you don't intend for those images to end up in your travel portfolio, fine, not judging you. But where I have a problem is when those images end up in your portfolio. You know, just because it's something interesting, just because the thing's famous, Big Ben, Eiffel Tower, I should know more famous things than that. Big Ben and the Eiffel Tower. It's very, very wide of me, sorry. You see these monuments, you see these interesting things, your job's not done. You don't just stop in your tracks and take a picture. If you want to be a photographer, you stop, you think, you move, then you capture, okay? Number four on my list is the mega wide shot, right? Oh man, this is one, it just kills me. It's ridiculously popular on Instagram. And fine, if you're just going for those quick, quick likes on Instagram, take it, go wide. Grab your 16 to 35, crank it to 16, and just shoot wide. You can't go wrong with a wide angle shot. It's gonna be beautiful. Because most people don't have that mega wide lens, right? So that's how you're gonna be good. You've got a lens they don't have. Wrong, if you're gonna shoot mega wide, have a mega reason to shoot mega wide. Does that make sense? Like if you're gonna shoot really wide, fill your frame. It's ridiculously difficult to shoot ridiculously wide. Why? Because when you're shooting really wide, you should do so with purpose. Every decision you make as a photographer, do so with purpose. So if you're gonna shoot at 16 or a fisheye or crazy distorted, why are you doing so? You know, it makes sense sometimes when people are shooting like extreme sports and they wanna get that angle or looking up with the skateboard going over, fine, but they've done so with purpose. If you're just taking out your camera, you're cranking it wide because hey, everything looks good wide, you're wrong, it doesn't. If you're gonna shoot wide, just like if you're gonna shoot tight, do so with purpose, have a reason. And really, the wider you go, the more difficult it is to do so. The widest I typically shoot is 21 millimeters, and even that is very, very rare for me. And when I do so, I have a reason. I do it because I've looked around, there's a lot of things I'm trying to get in my shot. A lot, I'm gonna fill that entire frame. If I'm shooting at 21, everything is filled. Something here, something here, something here, something here, here, all those things. Or if I'm in like a tight situation, I really still need to get everything, but I can't move. That's when I'm gonna use it. Don't just shoot mega wide for no mega reason. Number five on my list and the last one for today, but I've got loads of these, so if you enjoy this, I'm just gonna keep going after this. I'm gonna do part two, part three, part four, part five. Is the bad photograph fixed with a gimmicky filter or just ridiculous amounts of toning? You've taken a bad photograph or an average photograph and you're gonna spice it up. You're gonna have those seasonings, and what are those seasonings? You're just gonna add crazy ridiculous HDR, or you're gonna use some gimmicky new filter that you've downloaded, or you're just gonna take that saturation bar and just crank it up. Or you're gonna go black and white, right? You know, bad picture, but it's a black and white, now it's a good picture. No, it's not a good picture. A bad picture isn't going to be fixed with any of these things. A good picture should pass the wake-up test, meaning you wake up in the morning, you look over at that picture, it's raw, it's got no makeup on, and you still find it beautiful, and you still find it sexy. If you take that picture and you remove all your editing, put it back to raw and you wake up and you're, oh, oh, 
What's that? I didn't expect that. Ugh. Ugh. Then it's not a good picture. You know, a little bit of toning is okay. Yes, you can correct the color. Yes, add some contrast, fine. But if you're really relying on that, then it's not a good picture. A good picture can stand the test of time. So an average picture that's horribly composed or poorly exposed or just has no meaning to it, has no depth, has no point of interest, has no story, it's not gonna be fixed with these things. What's gonna make a good picture is if next time you stop and you think about what you're capturing and how you're capturing it and why. And that should fuel all your decisions that you make on your lens, on your exposure, on your distance, on your perspective, all those things. And so if you are guilty of these things, don't be discouraged. This is tough love. I love you guys. I wouldn't say this to you guys if I didn't love you guys. I have to tell you, because nobody else is. Your friends are going, oh, great, great wide shot. Oh, great, oh, HDR, how did you do that? Oh, I'm telling you as a friend, I'm telling you because I love you. Stop taking these shots. And if you had, again, silently and secretly go over to your website, just remove them from your website. No one's going to know. And you're going to be tempted in the future. You're going to want to go wide. You're going to want to shoot those shots of the kids. You want to get the 7200. Fine. Take it for now. Eventually, I want you to stop taking it, not even thinking about taking it. But for now, take it, but just don't put it in your portfolio. Don't put it in that travel gallery. Don't put it in that portrait gallery. And then slowly stop taking it and start taking more meaningful shots. Slowly start to have purpose to everything you do as a photographer. Before you even click the shutter, ask yourself why. And if you always ask yourself why and you have a good reason for why, you'll stop being an average photographer, you'll stop taking cliche images, and you'll just improve overall as a photographer. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you didn't find me too harsh today. I was excited about this. I might have come off a little bit angry. I wasn't. This was playful. If you guys have taken these shots or you have your own ideas on what are some cliche shots that really annoy you, add it in the comment section. I'd love to read it. Love to hear about it. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Take it easy. Bye.